What's up people? Today we'll be discussing a two-step tip for improving brain functioning. Now this tip particularly works when you need to perform a tedious task involving a lot of brain power, a task such as reading and understanding a book or memorizing some text. I have developed this tip through my personal experience and I've backed it up through evidence I've gathered. Now honestly speaking, this tip works for me and it might work for you. So try to give it a shot if you want to. The rule is to follow this tip in sequence as in first step first, second step second and also to not miss any step. If you thought this was obvious my friend, then you are considered a smart boy. First step is to perform any type of exercise which could be from a 20 to 30 minute cardio session or an intense weightlifting session. The point here is to elevate your heart rate. Some benefits of exercise for the brain. Exercise helps memory and thinking in both direct and indirect ways. Directly, it reduces inflammation, it reduces insulin resistance, it stimulates the release of growth factors. There are chemicals in the brain that help maintain the health of brain cells, the growth of new blood vessels in the brain, and even the abundance and survival of new brain cells. Indirectly, exercise can improve your mood and sleep and reduce your stress and anxiety levels. These factors usually contribute to cognitive impairment. Want some evidence? Well, here you go. This point of evidence has been taken from the book Spark by John Rady. It shows that students who exercise before class are likely to perform better than their non-exercising peers. If you'd like to know more, please check out the book. This excerpt from the article The Influence of Exercise on Cognitive Ability shows the many benefits of exercise on brain functioning and it also talks about effects of a fitness lifestyle on the brain. Don't want to improve your memory and thinking? Well, exercise helps reduce body fat levels and helps you get stronger. Now you have a reason to exercise. Second step is to involve most of your starchy carbohydrate intake near to the period when you will be working. This is because in theory, movement, especially intense movement such as weightlifting or sprinting, turns our bodies into nutrient processing powerhouses. At this point of time, if you consume carbs, what your body is going to do is either oxidize it as fuel or store it as glycogen. And if at this point of time you consume protein, it starts the protein synthesis of even though your brain occupies only 2% of your body weight, it consumes up to 20% of your oxygen intake and up to 60% of your glucose intake. Why? Because more than 80 billion neurons are sending and receiving information throughout the day, creating intricate thought and emotions. I mean, come on. True? Nah. Yes, true. Here's the evidence. This article from the University of Chicago Press has shown that carbohydrate consumption in the form of starch was a very important component in the evolvement of the human brain over the past million years. Your brain is a really busy animal. An example of this tip could be that you work out at 6 in the morning after which you have your biggest meal of the day and then during your work period which is of 6 to 10 hours you consume 2 to 3 meals and after the work period you consume two to three meals which comprise mostly of proteins and fats. This ensures that the brain is ready for the work that is to be given to it and that it can be fueled once again when it is out of its energy. Thank you people for watching. I hope this tip works for you and boosts your productivity and I hope you live a life filled with animation. Please support my channel, spread the info. I'm Suhail Mirza and be ready to stimulate yourself. Stir, 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 stir. Stimulate yourself.